Around the grounds, NRL Fantasy Round 3. Let's go. We're going to be talking today about the big scorers this week, uh, the lower scorers, the most owned players, whether we should be panicking, buying, selling, whatever it is here. So your initial analysis on all the games from Round 3. Um, first guy here is Jacob Kraz. 96 points. He topped the scoring for Round 3. Absolutely monstrous score. Um, from him, he's capable of this. He's capable of this. He's not going to play the Titans every week, so that's a bit of a downside for you. But at 532k, He'll bounce up to sort of 560, 570K, something like that. He's probably a little bit dangerously priced. You know, he's on a dog side that aren't going to win every game, 32-0 or 38-0, whatever it was. Um, but at the same time, he is a big upside player. Val Holmes, 88 points. Yeah, he's a beast. He's got some good fixtures coming up as well. Um, you will have to sell him for origin, but he could be that massive pod for you if you did want to take a run at him. You will only have him for, let's say, eight or nine weeks, though, so just keep that in mind. Kaloma Tungi, 12 tackle breaks in this one. I can't say anything more than that. 12 tackle breaks is crazy. Um, South Sydney are a bit dodgy, though, so I'm a bit off Kaloma Tungi, but at the same time, the price is pretty good. If you pick him and have a good form run, he does. Bravo to you. Um, I'll roll down the list here because there's a few guys to talk about here. So Nathan Cleary, big score from him, 75 points in 71 minutes. Uh, he, he put on a clinic against the Broncos. He's got another matchup this week that should be pretty winnable. Um, I can't remember who they're playing, but... I think it was someone someone decent without being too good. But for Cleary, yeah, I mean, he he's that sort of captain number one. Uh, I think I still think Hines is up there with him. And Hines, he scored that 50-point game without uh, having a good game at all. So, yeah, Nathan Cleary, 75 points. He's a gun. Coruscant, 74 points. Absolute monster in this one. Uh, he could be a buy. He could definitely be a buy. He was doing everything against the Sharks in a big upset. And James Tedesco, 71 points. He's been on fire, so 63 average to start the year. He is in awesome form. And the Chooks, they look better as well. Um, going down the list, Carrigan, he's getting some more, not more minutes, but more more runs, more responsibility with Payne Haas out. He's carrying the team. He could be a big pod for you. He'll be uh, priced close to 800K. So the upside is limited, but yeah, he's an absolute monster as well. Fogarty, 62 points, killing it. Um, and then a noteworthy guy to talk about here is Kai Pierce Paul. Paid 80 minutes in back to back weeks now. Lucas is on the bench. Frizzell went to the middle when Lucas came on. So Kai Pierce Paul's minutes are safe. Do you want to get him at sort of 550, 560K? I think he's a pretty good shout. I think he's a good shout. This Knights team is very strong in attack, and he will be the beneficiary of a lot of that. Um, Jordan Rapana, my pod, 61 points. Super stoked with that one. He is averaging. 46 to start the year. We said he'd average maybe 49 based on history. So he's working his way up there. The Raiders had some pretty good matchups to come up to. Uh, Galvin, 261K, 60 points, big performance. He's great in real life. He's great in fantasy. Don't overthink this one. Have him, plug him into your starting side, and let him be. Isaiah Yo only played 70 minutes in this game, but 58 points is still great for him. He is cruising to start the year. Harry Grant, bit of a bounce back game, 58 points. He started a bit slow with 49 back to back weeks. He's now bummed out that 58. I think he will be a guy that if you do have him, you got to hold on. He's got to ride that wave. And then down the list, yeah, not too much to note here. I mean, Ponga, 52 points. It was a step up, but was it enough of a step up? Um, he, he he looked really good early in this game and then just sort of cooled off. And that seems to be the, the trend this year for him. So. I'm sort of not that high on it. Pappenhausen killed it again, 51 points. He's a bit cheaper than Ponga, which is why the bar is a bit lower. Um, Terrell May, he picked up that little calf injury, so keep an eye on him, but 50 points again. He's he's cruising. Uh, it's just keep an eye on that calf because he could play smaller minutes this week. So Aaron Clark's a really interesting one. Tino did his ACL, which is terrible news for him, terrible news for the Titans. We now shift eyes to uh, who is going to be the minutes beneficiary in this Titans pack. Um, while Tino is out of the team and hopefully has a great recovery. Um, but Aaron Clark could be one of those guys. So he's a hooker and a middle. So if you have Harry Grant on by this week, Clark could be a guy who averages 40, 45, 50, because he's done that before when he gets the minutes. He'll be on my list to have a look at. Um, moving down the list, Zach Hosking played 60 minutes, scored 48 points, came off the bench. We said to hold on. He did do enough for you to keep him. He's going to keep making money for a little bit longer. Uh, I still think that you'd be looking to sell him pretty soon. Coming off the bench, he, he is an 80-minute guy. He relies on that 80 minutes, but he's just been a monster this year. He's been so good for the Raiders. Keep in mind, too, that Horsburgh will come back this week as well. Eisenhuth keeps turning up. Damian Cook got put on the bench. That was pretty dicey. He still scored all right. 
Cobo has a small chance of playing fullback, but probably not. 46 points, though, in the loss they had is really good. He's He's been in great form. And then down the list, yeah, look, we're down to the 40s, the low 40s scores. Mitch Kenny, he uh, he scored 43 with a try. Him and Lusick both. So Lusick scored 28. They both scored pretty disappointingly um, considering their games. So I, I think that was pretty disappointing for both those guys. I'm just going to shift over to the most owned players here instead so we can talk about some of these guys. Ben Trevojevic, 15 points, 63 minutes, something like that. He was a massive disappointment. I am looking at him and looking at Strange and thinking, how can I keep starting these guys in the centers? And we talked about it a bit last week. Like, who makes the move first to buy a gun center, two gun centers, stop starting these guys? I should have done it last week. <laughs> I should listen to my own advice. Um, yeah, because they were both really disappointing. So once you can pot up with a good center, that might be a good move. But at the same time, they could both bounce back and get bigger scores next week as well. So don't react too harshly, but you know, keep an eye on it. Piakura, he played a lot of center in this game. He was really, really bad for fantasy in center. Um, he had a good second half in the back row, though, so he sort of bounced back. Salmon, 37 points. Xavier Wilson got about 35. Uh, Reese Walsh, sorry to you owners there. Uh, he's out for four to five, maybe six weeks. Two points. He got patched up in the first sort of couple of minutes of this game with that head clash. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. That's a, that's a tough one to deal with. Chan didn't play this week. He had that hand infection. But Sean Bloor also probably, I would have thought, would be above him in the pecking order. So keep an eye on this. He's got the buy this week. I'm not saying sell Chan because 295k is not a lot of money. But at the same time, I would be open to that if you had a good move that you could make with Chan. Um, Josh Curran, quite a game for him. Not as many points. Keeney, 18 points. Keeney's just not been what we hoped he'd be. Uh, so that's been a real disappointment for, for me and some other coaches. Flanagan, 46 points. Big bopper game. Scored that try. He's coming into it this year. Honestly, I was a bit off him last week. Um, I've held on to him just <laughs> this week. And he's he's coming into it now. He sort of seems to be playing a bit of a better role. Um, Dragons are playing some better footy. We'll see how he goes. He's 371k. He'll be up to be 400k. Um, it's pretty dicey. Nico Hines had one of the worst games you'll ever see him play and scored 50 in fantasy. To me, that's it's not ideal. It's not ideal. You don't want that to happen, but it's kind of a win because it proves that he has that fantasy pedigree where if he plays a bad game of footy, he is still going to be a producer for fantasy. So I'm looking at him and I might captain him next week. I might double down on this strategy. Uh, and Cleary had that little sort of hobble last week as well that you know probably isn't anything, but... I don't know. I just think Hines is that fantasy producer, and he can't have that terrible of a game two weeks in a row. So I'm giving an eye on him. Um, down the list, most owned. Turbo had a couple of plays called back. Still scored 46. He's had a few ref calls that have... Um, and they've been correct calls, but they've sort of slowed him down in terms of fantasy production. Latrell Mitchell right back to earth. 24 points. Yeah, that was a shocker for South, a shocker for him. If you got him, you got to ride the wave. He's going to go up and down. Uh, but yeah, if you if you bought him last week, you're probably not very happy about that one. Bit of Buyaki scored 40 points with a try. You take the try out of that game, it's like a low 20 score. It's less than ideal, but at the same time, it's good for his money. So we'll take that and move on. Um, yeah, last week I mentioned before, 28 points, really poor fantasy score, really poor. Uh, going to list, he's looking like Levi actually with 25 points. So <laughs> but Levi scores more tries. Uh, then down the list, yeah, there's not too many other guys here to talk about. Hutchison, 37 points. DCE's value with uh, Brooks next to him is, is tanking for fantasy. He's absolutely tanking. I thought he'd hold in sort of the low to mid-50s. Um, he was a 60s average last year. I thought he'd drop maybe 5 or 10 points. He's dropping even more than that right now. So we've got DCE. I'd be selling pretty quickly. Uh, it's not a rage trade because his role has changed. So, yeah, you're, you're good to hop off there. Smithy's really interesting. Um, Horsburg comes back this week as well. So if you got him, you probably wait one more week and see what the role is. But last week it was about 65 minutes. Whitehead played a bit in the middle. It's not a great rotation for him. So uh, yeah, with Smithy's, give it one more week. Give it one more week. But uh, this Raiders forward pack is looking very, very crowded. And I'll finish here on Sean Lane, who scored 18 points. And I am so disappointed. <laughs> he's He's been a 40 to 55 average his entire career and he's playing 80 minutes in this good parasite and they're winning games he scored a try last week and got 44 which was really disappointing 18 points is shocking for fantasy so 
I'm going to finish on Sean Lane here. Look, um, stay tuned. We do buy, hold, sell on Wednesday mornings. We do a bunch of other videos. We've got content going out on Instagram, on TikTok as well. Um, but yeah, that's that through you this week. Let me know in the comments what trades you're thinking of doing. Also, we're going to be launching a Discord channel really soon too. So we can have a bit of a forum where we can talk fantasy, talk trades, do team reviews, that kind of thing. Keep an eye on this. Um, actually, if you leave a comment below and ask for it, I'll give you early access. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video.